Well, Disney is certainly banking on The Last Jedi to break the box office. And just hours before the opening of Star Wars' latest installment, the company finalized its $52 billion deal to take over 21st Century Fox. Now, many say the move signals a great shift in Walt Disney's business strategy. To find out more, I'm joined by Dan Rayburn, Principal Analyst with Frost & Sullivan, a global research and consulting organization. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Now, Disney put some strong demands on cinemas showing the new Last Jedi film. It wanted 65% of ticket sales. So how likely is this to set a new precedent? Well, even mind how type of content is the type of Disney has in terms of Star Wars. It's an amazing franchise. They already know how many people are interested in it. I don't know if it sets a precedent, because I think the amount of revenue that's shared is based on the quality of the content that they're producing. So I, I don't think everybody can get that, but it is an interesting number. Certainly something that Disney was obviously able to command as we see all the cinemas there trying to snap it up. So let's also look at its deal. How much of a game changer is Disney's deal with 21st Century Fox, and especially in terms of how we consume media? Well, it's pretty interesting. So here's the thing. Uh, historically, over the last couple of years, companies like Disney have always gone through, typically share their content through an aggregator, somebody like a Netflix. And now what they're realizing is they can go direct to consumers with an OTT over the top video offering. So it's one of the reasons why BAM Tech is going after more, uh, sorry, why Disney is going after more content. And it's one of the reasons why Disney recently acquired BAM Technology Services, which is major advanced media's division, because they need the technology to actually power this. So next year, we're going to see Disney ESPN service. The year after, we're going to see a Disney movie service in 2019 of some kind. But I think this makes it pretty clear to any traditional broadcaster and content owner, when Disney makes this type of acquisition, we know where the broadcast market is going. And we certainly know that this has global implications. Disney already had access to China, and this still makes them a powerhouse in Asia and Europe as well. So how important is that, especially as Hollywood looks to other markets in terms of its box office revenue? I think it's very important because we have to think of the consumer these days as totally connected on any device at any time, and consumers are looking for content globally. So there's a lot of consumers outside the U.S. that are interested in the type of content that Disney has that a lot of people primarily think is geared towards uh, customers in the U.S., but that's not the case anymore. We're really talking about a global Internet. So I think a lot of broadcasters and content owners are looking at what Disney has done and what they're putting together. And I think we're going to see more deals like this pretty soon. I don't think it's going to take that long for others to follow suit. Now, on the one hand, you have consumers and have also the other streaming services who are all watching this deal closely. Who has the most to lose and the most to gain in all this? That's a great question. Who has the most to lose is probably Netflix, because Disney has already said they're going to pull their content from Netflix when the contract ends in 2019. We then heard, though, that there might be some rumors going around that maybe Netflix would still be able to license just specific Disney content. Um, don't know if that's the case. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, so I'd say Netflix is probably the biggest loser here, as well as somebody like Amazon uh, with their prime streaming service. The, the biggest winner here is Disney. They're going to go direct to consumers with a brand that everybody's heard of before with great content and with uh, you know, the best underlying technology in the space in terms of acquiring BAMTech. So how do you envision other companies then adapting their strategies now that this deal is in fact done? Well, they're going to have to think global and they're going to have to think larger. So think of somebody like CBS. CBS came to the market a couple years ago direct to consumers with a product called CBS All Access. So you pay a fee every month like Netflix and you get access to just CBS shows. But we're seeing that consumers are starting to associate with content more than they're associating with channels. So if you really want to play in the content game, you have to start aggregating content. And Disney's really showing that because they're saying in order to go to consumers, we have to have more than just Disney content. We have to have a breadth and depth of catalog that's really, really good with quality content consumers are willing to pay for. So I think that's really the next trend that we're starting to see. All right, thank you so much. Good for having your insights. Dan Rayburn, Principal Analyst with Frost & Sullivan.